when you go to the polling station, you'll be given a, a piece of paper, which is called a ballot paper. Look for the PSP logo, which is the palm tree. Now, next to the palm tree, there is a box. Make a cross within the box. That is how you vote. And don't write anything outside the PSP box. Thank you. PSP goes marching in when PSP goes marching in and Parliament will hear our thunder when PSP goes marching in when PSP goes marching in when PSP goes marching in we will wait them from their slumber when PSP goes marching in when PSP goes marching in when PSP goes marching in we will make them all accountable when PSP goes marching in when PSP Goes marching in when PSP goes marching in. We want a better life for our people when PSP goes marching in. When PSP goes marching in, when PSP goes marching in, we will work for country and people. When PSP goes marching in When PSP goes marching in
PSP goes marching in. When PSP goes marching in, and Parliament will hear our thunder. When PSP goes marching in, when PSP goes marching in, when PSP goes marching in, we will wake them from their slumber. When PSP goes marching in, when PSP goes marching in, when PSP goes marching in, we will make them all accountable. When PSP goes marching in, when PSP goes marching in, when PSP goes marching in, we want a better life for our people. When PSP goes marching in, when PSP goes marching in, when PSP goes marching in, we will work for country and people. When PSP goes marching in, when PSP goes marching in. Hello, good day everyone. My name is Craig and we are here in the studio and together with me and a panel of PSP uh, candidates, I have with me Dr. Tan Cheng Bok and Mr. Lee Hsien Yang. And uh, the purpose of us meeting here today is to actually give you a summary of what we have done over the nine days of polling with tomorrow being the cooling off day. So we are not uh, supposed to be doing any poll polling or talk about politics, it's purely a cooling off day. So today is the last opportunity for the Party Secretary General, uh, Dr. Tan Cheng Bok, and of course our special guest, Mr. Lee Sien Yang, who are here with us. And later on, we will also allow some of our PSP candidates from the different GRCs and SMCs that we are contesting in, in Singapore to share with you some of their thoughts and what are some of the reactions they have got from the ground pertaining to what they think PSP will be able to do for them when they get elected into Parliament. Now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, all Singaporean viewers and voters, uh, without further ado, it gives me great pleasure now to give the floor to the Secretary General of Progress Singapore Party, Dr. Tan Cheng Bok, to say a few words to all Singaporeans. Dr. Tan? Yeah. My fellow Singaporeans, today is the last day of campaigning. And so I want to take this opportunity for some... Hello, good day everyone. My name is Craig and we are here in the studio and together with me and a panel of PSP uh, candidates, I have with me Dr. Tan Cheng Bok and Mr. Lee Hsien Yang. And uh, the purpose of us meeting here today is to actually give you a summary of what we have done over the nine days of polling with tomorrow being the cooling off day. So we are not uh, supposed to be doing any poll polling or talk about politics, it's purely a cooling off day. So today is the last opportunity 
for the Party Secretary General, uh, Dr. Tan Cheng Bok, and of course our special guest, Mr. Lee Sien Yang, who are here with us. And later on, we will also allow some of our PSP candidates from the different GRCs and SMCs that we are contesting in, in Singapore to share with you some of their thoughts and what are some of the reactions they have got from the ground pertaining to what they think PSP will be able to do for them when they get elected into Parliament. Now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, all Singaporean viewers and voters, uh, without further ado, it gives me great pleasure now to give the floor to the Secretary General of Progress Singapore Party, Dr. Tan Cheng Bok, to say a few words to all Singaporeans. Dr. Tan. Yeah. My fellow Singaporeans, today is the last day of campaigning. And so I want to take this opportunity for some of my, mem some of my candidates here to highlight some of the things they encounter, some of the issues they, they have uh, encountered with, with the residents and with the voters. So today is actually a wrapped up of what they have been doing over the last week, this past week. And I think it is important because these issues concerns you, concerns how you are going to vote. And I, I, and I will be very, very happy if they can share all this with you tonight. So can I pass, I pass it now over to Craig to, uh, to introduce the people who are involved. Sure, Doc. Thank you very much. Uh, so uh, we have our members who are out there, our candidates, and of course uh, our ASG Assistant Secretary General Leong Man Wai is uh, one of the panel members out there, uh, separated from us. We have to do this all because of COVID-19 and uh, safe distancing. So besides uh, Leong Man Wai, who is the ASG of PSP, we also have another CEC member, which is uh, Yuan Kin Peng Francis, who will be joining us on the panel. Together with them is another CEC member, who is, they're both actually from uh, Chachukang uh, GRC, uh, uh, there will be Abdul Rahman, and with them as well will be uh, Wendy Lowe, who is from Tanjung Paga GRC, and uh, we have also Kumaran Pillai, who is from uh, yeah, uh, Kebun Baru. Baru. Kebun Baru. Kebun Baru. And uh, who's the last person that we have outside there? There's Rama, Francis, Manwai, Wendy, and Kumaran. Yes, that's all five of them. So um, most of them are still busy uh, walking and uh, doing their walkabouts and encouraging the voters to vote for them. Uh, while there is still time and as today being the last day of campaigning, they must cease all activities by 2359 of today as the ninth is the cooling off period. So ladies and gentlemen and all viewers, uh, it now gives me also great pleasure to pass the floor to Mr. Lee Sien Yang, who is going to say a few words and share his thoughts on what has been going on leading up to polling day on Friday. Thank you very much. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Lee, the floor is yours. Thank you, Craig. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I arrived back in Singapore in the middle of March, and I served quarantine at home. Um, and I watched as people here were encouraged by the government to be out and about. Daycare centres and schools were kept open People took the crowded MRT to go to work, and Singaporeans were encouraged to visit the local tourist attractions and to do staycations over the March school holidays. Within two weeks, Singapore's COVID-19 cases had quadrupled from 1,000 to almost 4,500 cases. And besides the local community cases, there was an eruption of cases in the foreign worker dormitories. How did this happen when the world was heaping praise on Singapore's handling of the pandemic? I think Singaporeans know better, judging by all the jokes that were made about Dawscon Orange. I wonder if the government knew what it was doing. Many people wondered too. As other countries went into lockdown, we remained open. The advice we were given was, don't wear masks. Wear masks only if you are feeling sick. And then contrarian voices were dismissed offhand. Was the government putting the economy ahead of people's lives? It was only on the 3rd of April that the government suddenly announced a lockdown, or as they euphemistically called it, circuit breaker. It also said that it would no longer discourage people from wearing masks. And after weeks of insisting that masks were not required, we did an about turn. Amidst the uncertainty caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, 
The PAP was talking about an early election. Was the PAP exploiting the situation and people's fears, putting its desire to secure a strong mandate ahead of our lives? Was this the reason for the government's indecision and delayed action on locking down? In any event, the delay has cost lives and created an avoidable impact on the Singapore economy. This brings us to today, the last day of campaigning in this COVID-19 election. On Friday, our votes will determine Singapore's path for the next five years. Our votes will determine if the population of, in Singapore will continue to grow substantially. Whether there is a 10 million target or some other population target, whether Singaporeans will face more competition from foreign talent for jobs and promotions, whether there will be enough opposition MPs in Parliament to hold the PAP to account. Our votes will decide if we have a voice in Parliament on issues such as GST increases, HDB leases decaying, titanic ministerial salaries and secret salaries at Tamasic. Our votes will decide if we continue to see the monochrome of PAP's natural aristocracy or if we address groupthink and bring in fresh ideas. On my walkabouts this election, I visited several rental blocks and witnessed firsthand poverty in Singapore. It was a sobering sight. The PAP claimed no one will walk alone. It did not seem so from what I witnessed. We have not done a good job of caring for our aged and poor. Yo Lam Kyong, who is an ex-GIC chief economist and a vocal advocate for the poor, estimates about a quarter million Singaporeans are absolute poor. That's less than $500 per capita per month. 10%, 7.5 to 10% of households. Then there's a similar number who earn between 2,500 to 3,000 a month, households able to meet their basic needs, but who aren't able to save, and in the event of something unexpected like COVID-19, will fall straight into the bottom 10%. As a first world country today, should we not spend less on vanity projects and do more to help these people? Where is our compassion and humanity for our fellow Singaporeans who have walked this journey with us and our fathers. The Progress Singapore Party has that compassion. It has a brain's trust of thoughtful and sensible leaders who want to build a Singapore where the benefits are shared more fairly and not just with the elite. PSP defends freedom of speech and good values and a Singapore where our people matter. No more blank checks. We must rescue the future of the country we love. Singapore needs different. We must vote fearlessly. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ted. That was Mr. Lee Hsien Yang, who is a member of PSP. And of course, uh, it's so very true that uh, we must not, okay, we must not give the current incumbent government a blank check to do as they want, where the benefits only the select few and the rest of Singapore become abandoned as a result of policies which are skewed towards the beneficial, the beneficial, uh, you know, th that, that group of people uh, up there. So uh, after this, uh, folks, we are going to bring on uh, the, the questions up to the panel of the other members where I mentioned we have Mr. Leong Man Wai, who is the Assistant Secretary General of PSP. Together we see CC member Mr. Francis Yuan, Mr. Abdul Rahman, Ms. Wendy Lo, and of course Mr. Kumaran Pillai, and they are all ready to take on your questions. So we will just uh, set up uh, very quickly right now and we're going to bring the questions towards them. Thank you. <music> Thank you.
Hi everyone, uh, welcome back. Uh, as I was mentioning just now, we are in the studio recording. Earlier on, you had a chance to hear Dr. Tan Cheng Bok, who is the Secretary General of PSP, together with our special guest, Mr. Lee Sien Yang. And right now, I have with me my panelists, who are all the candidates from PSP who are contesting in different GRCs and SMCs who are present with me right at this very moment. So I will introduce them and they'll just do a slight wave so you can remember who they are. And the first person I have is Mr. Leong Man Wai, who is contesting in West Coast GRC. And after him is um, uh, Yen Kim Ping Francis, who is in Churchill Kang GRC. And right next to uh, Francis is uh, the lovely lady that's Wendy Lo. She is in Tanjung Paga GRC. A uh, slight way, thank you very much, that's Wendy. And just behind Wendy is Kumaran Pile, who is from Kebun Baru SMC. And last but not least, is we have also from Church Wang GRC, that's Abdul Rahman. Welcome, everyone, to the program. Thank you. Okay, so folks, uh, now is the chance for you all to find out from our panelists, our candidates who have been pounding the ground uh, for the last couple of days, uh, busy campaigning and asking to get to know the visitors, I mean the, the voters better and the residents of the different GRCs and SMCs. So I'd like to uh, open up this uh, floor now to the, the panelists who are here and ask them to share with us some of the issues and some of the concerns of the residents and voters in the different GRCs and give you a feel of why uh, they are or what they are going through and uh, what are some of the issues that are really you know uh, hot button issues for the voters throughout Singapore and also later on the panel will share with you what are some of the things they're bringing to the table and importantly why you should vote for them in the coming GE which is happening this Friday uh, on the 10th of July. So without further ado, uh, I'll open the floor now to the panel. So I'm um, not sure who is going to be the one to start the ball rolling right now. So uh, who would like to... I'll start, Craig. Okay, start, sure. Yes, Manuel, yeah, the floor yeah. is yours. Yeah, yes. Tell everyone what's yes. happening. Yes, uh, dear voters, uh, we have come to the end of our nine-day campaign. Uh, today, tonight is our pleasure uh, to give you a roundup of what we have experienced and uh, the feedback we got from the ground. Okay, In the first place, this campaign, as our party has said right from the, from the beginning, it should not have happened because we are still having the COVID pandemic. PAP likes to say that they are the captain of the ship. I would like to draw an analogy and, and say that, in the first place, that ship has moved in the wrong direction for a while. And they got, in them, got into a, a, a storm. And then in the midst of the storm, they call up, the HQ and say, I want to renegotiate my contract. That is the situation we are in now. Okay. If PSP is in government, I can assure you this will not happen. PSP is first built on the credibility of Dr. Tan Ching Bok. You can get a degree in four years, but Dr. Tan Ching Bok's decades of dedication and services to the country is something that is really amazing. And from the ground, in the last nine days, we had a lot, a lot of feedback from the ground. How good and uh, uh, all the good things that Dr. Tan has done to various people in Singapore. I will probably let my other colleagues to share with you some of the experiences and feedback they got from the ground about Dr. Tan Ching Bo. Okay, so who is the next to take the floor, please? Anyone? Just, uh, yes, uh, Raman. The next oh, one, Raman. Okay. No problem. Raman there. Well, yeah, because Man Wai is our neighbor. <laughs> he's with the West Coast. Uh, we are in Chua Chu Kang. And uh, he's talking about uh, the brand name, Dr. Tan Ching Bo. So we must actually express to you that we are part of the spillover means we benefit from it because uh, that area in Chua Chu Kang previously uh, was uh, Dr. Tan Cheng Bok's uh, constituency. So, and uh, also people who lived in uh, Ai Raja, you know, in Teban, in certain part of the West Coast has really shifted over to Chua Chu Kang because of redevelopment, because you know, they upgrade themselves. And you see there's still an association between uh, the the the, the, the people who live in the uh, West Coast area and now they are in Chua Chu Kang and they know about uh, Tan Ching, Dr. Tan Cheng Bok and we belong to the same party and we, we brought to them the message from Mr. Tan Cheng Bok and they are very happy 
Now, uh, most important is that they have been looking for a credible opposition because they are not satisfied with the present uh, leaders that is taking care of uh, Chua Chu Kang. So they want to see an uh, opposition which can deliver, not only can speak. Uh, since Mr. Tan Cheng Bok, uh, Dr. Tan Cheng Bok has got a uh, credible history in the past as, as a doctor and also as a MP. So the rapport is there, the synergy is there, it's easier to explain. And we can convince them and these people are very happy. Now, uh, the other thing is that um, Chua Chu Kang is uh, a place whereby we have uh, various stages, level of economic attainment. So we have quite a number of poor people in uh, Chua Chu Kang. And I think they have not been well attended. And we are here, we bring the message for the people. And I think there are going to be some uh, interesting things going to happen very soon. Thank you. Thank you. There, there was Abdul Rahman, who is from uh, Chajugang GRC, and I believe that Francis might be the next person that wants to say something. Or was it Kumaran? I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll follow up with what uh, <coughs> Rahman has said. Uh, uh, hello, uh, fellow Singaporeans and uh, residents of the CCK GRC. Uh, very nice to be here and uh, to share with you what has happened over the last nine days of uh, hectic campaigning. Uh, it has been very, very humbling and uh, very, very satisfying to going around uh, doing door-to-door -door visits, walk about from markets to household, from rental units to five-room units, meeting young families and elderly as well. Um, we really could see for ourselves how Singaporeans are left behind. There are indeed many Singaporeans left behind. For instance, Block 9 of uh, uh, Tech Y Lane is a clear example opposite the uh, coffee shop uh, where there are a lot of elderly living there on rental. They are really, really uh, in dire health. And uh, we therefore see that the PSP has a very important role to play a part to make sure that the government has got to strengthen the safety net to help these people. That's one aspect. We also hear a lot of local issues from hygiene, uh, hygiene factors like mosquitoes, cleanliness, to rats, uh, to maintenance issues in the estate, uh, to the lack of amenities, a hawker centre taking six years to build, and also uh, much more improvement can be made to the uh, management of town council. Uh, this is where we also would have strength to hopefully bring in our expertise and improve wherever there is a need for better management, we will be there to help to improve. But we're also quite gratified to hear of common national issues coming out from the visits. The common issues that I suppose uh, Senyang talks about just now, uh, jobs opportunities, cost of living, inequality of income, you know, lack of funds for retirement, unaffordable housing and healthcare. Those really came out and that reinforced also our belief that PFSP, our team, uh, whether it be at Chua Chu Kang or across the other constituency and wards that we are contesting, we will play a role locally and also in parliament to be able to come up constructively and collaboratively, collaboratively to work on policies to help to give ideas to solve the problems and the crisis that we are facing. So we have been always saying no one party has all the ideas. No one party has all the talent. We have a fair share of it. So are our colleagues in the other opposition party. Together, let's work really united to solve problems and cut across partisan line. And we hope we are given a chance this time to get into parliament, to do this job, and to get onto the ground to help the constituency to do better for a better living standard. Thank you. Right, thank you very much there, Kin Ping. And right now, I'd like to hear from Kumaran, who is in the SMC of Kebun Baru. So what's the experience for you there, walking on the, the, the ground in that area? Thanks, Craig. Um, hi from Kebun Baru. It has been a very exciting campaign for me. Um, I'm in a SMC, so things are a bit slightly different. A very local, localised campaign on local issues like dengue, housing, uh, and the status there. But what was really interesting was things started shifting in the ground when Doc visited 
um, Mayflower Market uh, you know, on one of the weekends, followed by uh, Mr. Lee Sien Young visiting the market as well. And we could feel an, uh, a certain level of excitement, exuberance, and people just became very ecstatic, started taking pictures. And um, so we had two celebrities uh, in our party. But what's interesting was people started telling me anecdotal stories about Doc and how he has treated them. Some of them have worked with him um, in the medical profession. And some of them from worked at, or lived in Ayaraja. So they would come and tell me stories about how he has helped them in, in back then when he was an MP uh, or when he was an MP in the house. So these are quite exciting. But there are also a lot of ground issues, and um, which I'll be talking about later. Uh, some of the other issues may be uh, national level issues, and I'm happy to share with them through the conversation uh, later tonight. Thank you. Back to you, Craig. Right. No worries. Thank you very much there, Kumara. And, uh, and now we leave the only rose among the sunflower, as I like to put it, rather than among the thorns. They are not thorns. All the guys there are nice sunflowers. Okay. So, Wendy, the floor is yours. Share with us your experience as well. You have been campaigning for the last few days. Thanks, Craig. Uh, hi, I'm Wendy, contesting in Tanyong Paga GRC. And the last few days has been an exceptional experience. I definitely feel a lot fitter. Um, there are many high-rise HDBs in the Dawson area that we have been actively door knocking. Um, 40 over stories, we covered three blocks last night and I totally was um, blacked out after, after doing that for a full day. And what was interesting, I think, is how Doc has been a household name for us across the different segments of Singaporeans that we tried to reach out to. And literally, there could be an uncle sitting in the living room um, just chilling out after a tired day. But the moment we mentioned Dr. Tan Ching Bok, his place would lighten up and he would come to the door, usually being very welcoming. So the reception we have received on the ground across different segments has been really warm. Um, and, and I think the greatest takeaway for me and my team is the friendships we have formed over just a very short time. Uh, we have the cleaner aunties and the hawkers who have started recognizing us and they are always cracking jokes with us. We have um, yeah, neighbors who have given us incense, you know, doing their meditation. They wanted to bless us. Uh, hawker uncles have given us additional portions of food whenever we order from them. So we are very, very well fed. So I think what I would miss most is actually the family and the friends we've, we've come to know. And hopefully with a positive outcome, we can really go back and start understanding their issues in depth. We have already heard a lot of stories, but it's really to find out more about what can be done for them. Um, whatever the outcome and results would be this Friday. Thank you. Right. Okay. Thank you very much there, Wendy. And uh, now we'd like to move on the topic. And I'd like to pass the floor to uh, Man Wai, who wants to reassure uh, the Singaporean voters about the candidates that have been selected to contest in this GE representing PSP. So, Man Wai, the floor is yours. Yes. Um, just now we mentioned about the uh, track record and the dedication and services of Dr. Tan. But PSP is just not only Dr. Tan. Okay. Dr. Tan has also gather together a team of uh, good candidates and people with uh, 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 experience and expertise over a, a wide range of uh, uh, industries and all that, especially in the management of uh, the future management of town councils, we are ready to take on that responsibility. Okay. We have uh, internally organized ourselves uh, into, we have organized a uh, so-called Town Council Resources Group, okay, comprising of Dr. Tan, who has been one of the who has been the uh, 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 the pioneering uh, chairman of the first Town Council in Singapore, and uh, uh, followed by myself, uh, who has been uh, 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 running uh, financial institutions for many years, and I understand a lot of things about finance and operations. Then I have uh, uh, we have uh, Francis Yun who has been uh, 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 a CEO of a large uh, industrial, industrial corporation. Okay. We also have Harish Pillay, who is the founding, one of the founding uh, members of Red Hat Singapore. 
as you probably know, Red Hat is a $30 billion company, US company in open source technology. So we are ready to help all the GRCs and SMCs that will get into parliament this round to run their count, town councils. We have all these resources ready for, uh, 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 to serve uh, you and, and the country. Um, other, uh, my other colleagues may want to share a bit more on, the, on that. Yeah. Sure, uh, Manwai. Now, the, the thing is, uh, one of the burning questions for a lot of mm. uh, voters in the areas where PSP and I'm sure the other alternative political parties are contesting will be, as Manwai mentioned just now, are they capable of running the town councils? Well, I can give you an assurance that your town council may be even better managed under the PSP than it is under the incumbent government. And you know, for those people who are a bit like living uh, at the poverty line or just below the poverty line, and they may be in arrears, right? So the standard procedure is they'll give you a reminder letter in which you forget to still pay up, they'll send you the ping letter. And if you still ignore them, they send you to court. I can assure you that is not going to be the way the PSP run town councils will be handling matters of this nature. They will send someone down to interview the families and find out what's going on and try to help them before you bring them to court. So those are some of the sad stories that happen. Now, over and above that, uh, we have the experience. So one of the things is, as Manwai mentioned, there was a, a Harish, right? He says he's got the software ready. If you guys remember what happened to the workers' party in Aljunit, the whole thing was taken away. So back to the panel, who would like to add on to what Manwai has just said? Yeah, Let's see. Just to yes, Francis. Just a quick comment on what Manwai has uh, said. Yeah. Uh, running the town council is uh, about improving things. And uh, there's always room for improvement. Our culture is always like, like a responsible uh, executive of a company. You always drive for continuous improvement. So there's opportunity for us to make improvement to the management of the town council to help to drive the cost down, being more efficient and effective, and uh, making sure that you know, if the residents get value for the money. In fact, if there's savings resulting in it, uh, you can be actually plow back in terms of lower uh, conservancy costs, if possible. If not, the saving can be used to make uh, other investment to make the estate uh, better. So there are, there are many areas that uh, a, a team with expertise can help to improve, not only maintain as it is. All right. Uh, yeah, so Wendy, was it Wendy? You wanted to say something? Yes, Wendy, go ahead. As Manoa has mentioned about the capabilities within the party, I've jokingly shared with my colleagues in uh, PSP that while currently they are talking about the 4G leadership, we actually have a 5G leadership. So we have Dr. Tan providing us with the moral compass and guidance as an ex-chairman, uh, as you've done in many years in Jurong East as well as West Coast Ayaraja Town Councils. So we already have that advantage over a number of other alternative parties. Uh, but beyond that, as Manwai has pointed out, we have a, a clear tier of people who have been spending many years in the private business sectors. Um, they bring across with them relevant business skills and experience. And if we extend the idea of running town councilships into providing job counselling, uh, job database and uh, job outreach opportunities, I think we have the real experience to bring to our residents and the people. Um, the third tier, of course, is that amongst our candidates, a lot of us come with very, very diverse experience. I myself am an uh, intellectual property and innovation lawyer. So from that, I've actually soundboarded some of the residents in Tanyung Baga. Certain ideas such as uh, bringing work pots into the residents of Tanyung Baga, such that they may want to marry a balance of working near their home but not exactly at home, but there is a small business centre of sorts that they can bring their laptops, uh, bring their cappuccinos and plug in from there, but at lunchtime go back to visit their families. We have also looked at uh, intergenerational support services where we could provide some level of employment for the elderly and to help young couples uh, care for the younger children. So there are innovative solutions that we can bring forward as well based on our background. And I think one thing which I find quite amazing is we also have a number of uh, ex-civil servants and ex-grassroot leaders who have joined us and they provide invaluable experience in terms of ground support. 
And last but not least, because of our 1,500 members and possibly growing over this campaign, a lot of them that I've encountered come from really interesting background. I've met at least an environmentalist, I've met journalists, people who are on the media line who can provide better platforms for us to create outreaches to residents. Um, and we even have a member who specialises in lift maintenance, uh, who's of an engineering background. So I think we are more than ready. So now it's really a question of you voting us in to give us that opportunity to provide better support and better solutions. Right, yes, yeah. Manwai. Yeah, in a nutshell, I think uh, on the issue of town council, we are going to bring in uh, uh, private sector expertise into managing the uh, town council in the future. Something to look forward to. And uh, we, after demonstrating that we are capable of doing that, in the future, we'll be using private sector expertise in managing our country. I think our country, you know, it has been waiting for too long. You know, managing a country should not be just pu public sector expertise and talents, but also the private sector expertise and talents. Okay? So next, uh, let me move into uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, economy area. Um, in the course of the campaign, uh, many uh, ministers have uh, uh, had uh, uh, a question asked about the SECA. Okay, we have been uh, 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 recommending that we should review the SECA, and then because of the uh, COVID situation, unemployment is uh, increasing very fast. Actually, now we would like to recommend that the government actually cut back on all these foreign talents. Okay, there are 400,000 foreign talents uh, you know, taking up the PMET jobs in Singapore. We think we could easily squeeze out a considerable number of uh, uh, jobs for our Singaporeans who have lost their job in the, in the COVID uh, situation. So that is something that uh, we like to uh, actually emphasize uh, more. But uh, the ministers have uh, come up with various uh, things that uh, uh, to question our, our, our motive and the uh, feasibility of our ideas. I think some of my uh, colleagues here will be able to share uh, uh, some of those uh, statements made by the ministers. Yeah. Yes, uh, Kumara. Yes, uh, okay, let's jump in quickly on the topic of SECA. Uh, last Sunday, I held a uh, MPS session at one of the void decks in Aumokyo every fall. And there was this very young girl, 23 years old, and the mother came down with her. And she apparently graduated with a degree in biomedical engineering uh, or medi biomedical sciences. And the mother was sharing that um, she applied for several jobs in, in that profession and she was not able to get it. And she was narrating how that job went to a foreigner. So we're not just talking about uh, SECA. This is more ubiquitous than we think it is. Um, and, and she was asking, what's the point of going through three, four years of university when you're not doing the job that you're trained for? So now she's working in a, as an accounts assistant or accounts clerk and drawing much less. And, uh, and, and the mother was in tears and she said she has spent all her money they're li living in a rental flat and hoping that they, there can be some kind of upward social mobility. All their hopes are dashed because she's not able to get the job that she wants and desires. So when I spoke to the doctor, she said, look, I'm still interested in getting back into biomedical and can we help? So I said that one of the key things that we are trying to propose is a more calibrated approach to immigration and the foreign talent policy. You know, we can't have unfettered access into Singapore. We need to uh, calibrate it, set quotas and sector by sector and allow um, all this talent to come through. And priority needs to be given to local graduates and local professionals. And I agree with Manwai, there are a lot of issues, not just with FTA, there are other issues that need to be looked at, and these are real issues on the ground. Thanks, Craig. Back to you. Just no another, problem. Yes, another, Francis. Just another point on this, the SICA. Uh, essentially, and this term foreign talent ought to be really a closer look at. I mean, I'm sure Manwai and myself, when we're overseas, he's Japan, I'm China, we are not called foreign talent by the Japanese or the Chinese. You know, we are just executive working for. And which is so loosely used here, and they are really, are, are they really foreign talent? So the question really is got to be of the right quality to be called talent. And these are talent that we really need to complement our people. To close the subject on, on SICA, number one is that I think Dr. Tan has made it very clear during the launch of the party that we need to review SICA 
from the viewpoint of let's have a balance sheet on SECA. In other words, this agreement is meant to allow Singapore companies to invest in, in India in exchange for talent, quote unquote, to be flown, to be uh, uh, tr transferred here to work. Uh, so there is a quid pro quo situation. But without knowing the balance sheet, whether we indeed achieve the objectives of this SECA, uh, really it's hard to say whether we have been successful or not. But it seems that it's not successful in that we have not been getting our share of our investment over there. Neither are we getting, I think, our talent going over there to work versus the opposite, the talent coming over here to work. So what we're really saying that let's look at all this uh, trade agreement or cooperative agreement and make sure that the deal is fair for both sides. And most of all, our Singaporean talent are not being jeopardized in their career. So we just read today that uh, we should not be negotiating, otherwise we seem to be U-turned. I think if we make mistake, we have to correct it and be bold to confront it and say, let's review and let's renegotiate. Thank you. And in the process of negotiation, we should not be bothered by the fact, which one minister mentioned, that what do we offer in return? If we are certain, after analyzing all the data, that it really, SECA or the other free trade agreements are really detrimental to our employment situation in Singapore, then we should make a U-turn. Okay, then it's our sovereignty right to renegotiate the free trade agreement. You know, we should not forget that this is our sovereignty rights. Yes, Wendy. Is there something you want to say? Yeah, um, just a small suggestion. I think pending the renegotiations, I think a lot of our fellow Singaporeans are still facing discrimination on the ground. And perhaps just looking at one example from Hong Kong, they actually have an Equal Opportunities Council. And it's actually a formal panel or uh, tribunal where you can actually refer uh, issues of employment discrimination suffered and lodge formal complaints for the appropriate remedies to be given. And I think there needs to be a more formalised assessment based on the ground because uh, international trade, if it does proceed on renegotiation, would take time. And based on the ground stories we are hearing, there is uh, constant feedback that this is a real problem. And I don't think bad HR practices or bad employers who have been Practicing discriminatory practice, uh, uh, opportunities can should be allowed to get away with that. So I think this is possibly one stopgap measure we can look at. All right, thank you. Uh, just like to throw up something to the panel. Uh, one of your colleagues who's not here today is uh, Tan Ming Wah, uh, Dr. Tan Ming Wah, who's also contesting with Francis Yuan in Chojo Kang GRC. He mentioned that the problems that are being faced by the PMETs in Singapore is not something that happened within the last three months and just because of COVID-19. This was something that happened over the last 20 years. And because of policies that were bad policies, if you want to call them, that were put in place that sort of were exacerbated because of the COVID-19, you know. And as Francis mentioned just now, there's no transparency. What about the numbers and all these things? And someone was mentioning that our graduates cannot get the job. I mean, our NUS, NTU are not world standards. Yeah. So what's your take on that? Exactly. Uh, that's why we, we, we say right from the beginning that the ship actually has been moving in the wrong direction for, for a long time, you know. And uh, it, it went into then, you know, unluckily, it went into a perfect storm. Okay. So the, the problems faced by our Singaporeans today is not just because of the COVID because we hit the storm at the point where we are the weakest. Okay? So we definitely would like uh, to, to suggest when we're going to cut parliament to the government that we really need a U-turn on the SECA and the free trade agreement and the foreign, ta and the foreign talent issue. That has complicated you know, and worsened the social uh, 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 inequality problems that we face and that leads on to the problem of whether we should have a social uh, safety net or not. And I think the social, social safety net would also need to be uh, uh, beefed up. Uh, and that is another key uh, policy recommendation that our party uh, is uh, aiming for. Yeah, taking on the social safety net uh, uh, question, I mean, uh, <clears throat> there has been always the recent talk about uh, uh, nobody being left behind. And uh, my colleague and I, and sure all of us walking the ground, just as CCK alone uh, mentioned, 
you know, block nine at the uh, Tekwai Lane, and some of the rental blocks, you see elderly struggling. These are clearly people left alone. Some of them couldn't even pay rental. No money to pay rental. Hardly could make ends meet. And the scheme to support them are really not going to be effective. So the question really is that why is it, uh, like our colleague ming say said, before even the COVID crisis, when they talk, um, shout out for this safety net, why wasn't this safety, uh, social safety net being strengthened way five, ten years ago? Uh, we have the resources to do it. We now spend $52 billion to help in the COVID crisis. Some of this money way back could have been spent to create a social safety net. And then we don't have this dire problem that is so serious right now. And I'm, so, I'm sure I think uh, my colleague Raman, who's been very close to some of the communities serving me, want to comment a bit more on, on, on this. You want to speak in Malay, maybe? <laughs> oh, okay, let me, let me speak English first. Yeah. Okay, uh, just a short uh, continuation of the discussion on uh, Cheka and also this uh, PMET unemployment problem. I believe, I believe there are lapses within the government, within the ministry which is res responsible for this. Because when we start to have an agreement, normally we would look into what are the repercussions, what are the possible uh, problems that we may face out of this. Maybe our, our, our citizen may, got, uh, may not get uh, proper jobs. Maybe there's uh, extreme competition. Maybe we are actually uh, uh, we are out of the competition because of uh, the salary demand or maybe uh, the minimum salary that uh, each person is actually looking forward to based on the general you know, level of uh, wages that are being practiced in Singapore. So uh, there's no proper monitoring of this situation. So, mm -hmm. It, it, gone, uh, it gone unnoticed and after that, because of this COVID-19, as you mentioned, Mr. Chairman, yeah, because of the COVID-19, things reveal itself. So now we realize that this government is incapable of actually monitoring, managing the employment of the uh, citizens of uh, Singapore. Now, coming back to uh, just now, Francis was talking about our experience talking to the citizens uh, in Chua Chukang. So as you know that, uh, as I mentioned earlier, Chua Chukang has got high number of people uh, living uh, below the poverty level and those below the, uh, what, what shall I say, uh, lower income group. So we could see that <clears throat> these people are somewhat displaced, completely, uh, I think, uh, oblivious by the part of the government not being able to actually look into the problem, you know, break the cycle, uh, the, the poverty cycle. And, and manage these people so that they can, they, can, uh, they can move up, you know, the economic ladder. So we can solve that problem rather than uh, feeding them with money. When you need money, I'll give it to you. You know, when you need any form of subsidies, I'll give it to you. That's not the way. We have to have what we call the early intervention. We have to get into the nip of the problem. Why these people is like that? We have to dedicate social workers together uh, with the citizens, you know, work it out how we can actually manage uh, this problem to actually resolve the poverty issues. Okay, thank you very much there, uh, Rama. Just to pick up uh, on this thing, uh, one of the questions uh, uh, that uh, Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong has actually asked the Singapore voters, who do you trust to bring Singapore through this crisis of COVID-19? You know, so uh, Kumaran, do you want to yes, take on that yes, question? Yeah, <laughs> um, indeed. So I, I've been thinking about it, you know, I've been walking the grounds in Sembawang Hills and um, Thompson Hills. And one of the things that they say is that uh, after 60 years, it's about time to have a stronger voice in parliament. And it's, it's not a question of trust. Uh, what people are looking for is accountability, transparency. And, uh, and there's a, a, a groundswell. And while the Prime Minister and the PAP is going and saying that it's a, it's a matter of giving them a strong mandate, the ground feels very differently about a lot of issues. They've, they've shared with me their concerns about how some of the spouses of the ministers are holding portfolios. And that has, has serious implications as well. Um, without you know, saying too much about those things, there are also other concerns, and there was one lady in her 65. She came up to me and she said, um, she's got $300,000 in CPF. 
uh, but she can't draw it down. And she asked me if her money is still there. I said, look, you've got to put me in parliament so that I can ask the right questions, so that we at PSP can ask the right questions to determine whether your money is still there, because there is not enough accountability and transparency. And it's the same question with the reserves as well. So we have been pushing our message and I've been getting a lot of support from the ground and people do agree and they say that we need to have a stronger voice in parliament. Yes, I think Manwai wants to add on something. Yes, Yes. Um, um, uh, uh, Dr. Tan Cheng Bok has uh, 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 have put forward a challenge to uh, uh, Minister Chan Chun Singh for a debate on how they manage COVID. Okay? So we shall not go into the, the, the details of uh, how, how well they have done or how bad they have done. Okay, they have not failed completely, but I think we all can say that if their perform performance in the management of the COVID cannot be said to be grade A. Maybe we can say grade B or grade C, definitely it's not grade A. So all that can be, can be seen and, uh, and uh, probably we, we, uh, there will be few who will disagree uh, on that. So that is the uh, uh, COVID uh, uh, situation that we are talking about. Just building on the, what Komar has said about uh, who to trust to bring the country forward in the um, midst of this crisis and also the word strong mandate which they have been clamoring for a long time. I think it's very important for us to make a point here. Uh, the ruling party has a strong mandate for, for years, the last five years especially, 70% of the vote. Um, so well before the COVID crisis, have the strong mandate brought about a better standard of living or better living for the, for the, for the majority of the people, uh, you are the best judge. You look at cost of living, look at all the other uh, uh, factors that are affecting the, uh, the population and the livelihood, I think alluded, uh, alluded by, uh, by San Yang. And having a strong mandate actually means that uh, you stifle alternative voices. And this is the time not to have stifling of alternative voices. This is the time for collective, collaborative voices that come with the best ideas brought to bear to help to overcome this crisis. So by having alternative voices, actually we are helping the ruling party to do a better job. And that is a very important decision that the voters got to make. You have seen a strong mandate being demonstrated, which is, does not equivalent to performance. You have seen a strong mandate that does not equal to a better livelihood. You have seen a strong mandate that has not been equal to decisive and and, and very clear decision making re with regard to the COVID crisis. So it's about time to try a less strong mandate, but a stronger alternative voice. And that is a very important point we want the voters to, to note here. Secondly, I just want to complete the, the, the discussion uh, that uh, our colleague, uh, Dr. Tan uh, ming had talked about, the problem before the COVID crisis. Other than the social issues, the economic issues have also been brewing. The crisis has brought about clearly that the economy has been so overly dependent on very vulnerable industries like tourism, like aviation and so on and so forth. And there is still no clear direction by the ruling government how and where we are going to go to overcome this, to make a more robust plan for moving forward to restructure the economy. Yes. The opposition has been challenged to throw a plan. We have ideas where to go forth, but let's hear what the government has also to share their plan so that we can give alternative solutions, alternative ideas, views on how the plan can be more robust. But that problem is always being cluttered by the fact that there is a lack of will to be transparent about data, about, about information, so that even the brightest brain can't give you a solution with no data. That's right. Yes, Wendy. Hi. Um, yeah, I think it's an interesting question about leadership. And I think this election in particular is seeing a very interesting dynamics in terms of renewal of leadership, both for PAP as well as for the alternative parties. And we're seeing some very interesting fights. So, for example, we have Nicosia and Jameis uh, against Heng Sui Kiat. And in the south side, we're also up against some fairly senior ministers. 
And I think the question that will be posed to the voters is, where are we headed? And I think that is exactly the analogy that Manwai has shared earlier. Um, for a long time, we have relied on a very strong branding of the PAP. But I think even as an intellectual property lawyer, there are times when we have to look beyond a branding and look at the substance of what is being delivered. And I think one interesting question I've been posing to some of the residents I've been engaging with is to think back in the last 10 years of what is a Singaporean homegrown business that has elevated itself to an international business. And most of them would scratch your head and the most common responses I've been getting is either SQ or creative, which actually dates from 20, 30 years back. So the reality of it as they are even asking this question is the realization that we have no real growth or innovation in the last 10 years. So much as people are comfortable with uh, a party that has been around and has delivered uh, in many fronts on varying qualities of result, I think at the end of the day, it's the macro direction that we're headed. And I think even by that one example, you can see that the current 4G leadership may not be able to steer the boat out of the storm. And this is the really critical question that I think Singaporeans would have to ask themselves in this renewal of leadership in this current general election. Yeah. So the next tier of questions which we have answered in relation to that is, Yes, they have a lot of senior politicians, but at the end of the day, no matter their seniority or uh, capabilities, they are limited by the party whip. And therefore, there is that danger of the group think. And that results in a lot of policies that have created difficulties. So even when my colleagues were talking about social security, you'll find that from the four budgets that were delivered recently, the criteria were extremely complicated and difficult for the everyday Singaporean to answer, uh, to understand. Uh, and comparatively, what we have, and as we've discussed, is that we feel very strongly that if PSP members are to get voted in as members of parliament, we would be voting from a position of our own conscience and what we think is best for Singaporeans. So look beyond the branding, look at the substance of what your current panel of candidates do present from PSP and choose the people who would be delivering results for your best interests and hopefully we would have a chance of getting out of this storm together. Yeah. Right, thank you very much, uh, Wendy. We have to wrap up this session soon and we're going to get Dr. Tan Cheng Bok to do a summary. But before we wrap this uh, part up, I just want to very quickly ask every one of you to say a few words and remind voters in the different GRCs and SMCs that you guys are contesting in why they should vote you into parliament. Start with Man Wai, very quickly now. I'll give you 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think uh, uh, two things. One is I'm a person who uh, give a lot of attention to details. I think the, it is important to, uh, as an MP to uh, pay attention to all the details in the, uh, in the uh, constituency and to actually make improvements, although they are small, but directly improve the lives of the constituents. Secondly is that I, have, I will bring with me a wealth of experience in business and finance which can be used to uh, come up with very innovative and creative ideas to change the, uh, the, the economic profile of West Coast GRC. Thank you there, uh, Manwai. So uh, next is Francis. Francis, your turn. Tell the voters why they should vote for you. Yes, I come from a generation that we are very grateful to our late Mr. Lee Kuan Yew, the first leaders, of the, the founder leaders of Singapore. They were the leaders who didn't have to be paid millions of dollars. They served with a heart. They served with compassion. They served selflessly. They brought Singapore up to where it is today. But it has changed. The ruling party is no longer the same party. They need millions of dollars to, to serve, and they don't perform just as well. In fact, it's gone the other way around. So performance is not equal, equivalent to how much you pay them. It's equal to how much the will, the will from the heart to serve and want to serve the country well. PSP has this compassion and this heart to want to serve. We believe in serving you and not you serving us. 
And we believe that the time has come, as Mr. Lee Kuan Yew himself said, there will come a time when people will say, let's try the other side. Either because the PAP has declined in quality or the opposition has come up with a team equal to the PAP. Fellow Singaporean and resident of CCK, the time has come and the time is now because PSP is a collective group of people with the right background, credentials, experience and experiences as well. Most importantly, with the heart to want to serve. And we are in Parliament not to be destructive. We want to be in Parliament to be constructive. We want to be creative, we want to be collaborative, and we want to play a role for the betterment of Singapore. With us in there, the ruling party will do better. Without us in there, the ruling party will not listen. They only hear. So I would urge all of our voters to give us a chance to vote very, very wisely. We are there to serve. We are there to show our compassion. And we have something to offer to the table. Thank you. Thank you very much. There was Yuan Jinping Francis. Uh, Kumaran, your turn from Kebun Baru SMC. Yes, hi. So I'm down to my final stretch. In a couple of hours, it's going to be cooling off day. Uh, I just want to thank the residents of Kebun Baru. Thank you for bringing out bottles of water on a hot day. Thank you for letting me into your homes. Thank you for sharing your sorrow, your joy and your love. Uh, it has been a, a life-changing experience for me. Whether I win these elections or not really doesn't matter. What I have experienced, the new friends and friendships that I've forged, is a life-changing event. I love to win this. I am very close to the line. And if you can vote for me and vote for PSP, I'm quite sure that I will get over the line. And with that, I'm counting on you, Kabun Baru. You are the conscience of Singapore. And with that, I'm sending it back to you. Great, thank you. Thank you very much there, Kumaran. Uh, Raman, your turn, please. Very quickly now, yeah, your yes, turn. Uh, well, I must thank you to the voters because uh, they are much wiser, intelligent, and uh, they really put us on a test. They ask very hard questions. And I'm glad that, you know, we share with them our dreams and our, our intentions and our, our, our attempt, actually, our initiatives, uh, as far as uh, Chua Chukang is concerned. And I see that they are very happy, so they are looking for an uh, a opposition which is credible, reliable, uh, qualified, and have wide experience behind them, all right, to actually run the town councils. Uh, as you know that uh, uh, Francis uh, manages the MNC, he was an army colonel before, he's not uh, parachuted uh, you know, here, he has the other experience as well. Then uh, we have uh, uh, Dr. Tan, who's a professor in economics. Then uh, I myself is a, I myself is an engineer, specialist uh, consultant. And we have Sean, who is young, very vibrant person, and very, very uh, uh, interested and uh, uh, wants to serve the, the, the citizens. So we have the perfect combination. So they, here you are. We offer ourselves and you have the choice, you have the option. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Abdurrahman. Very quickly now, Wendy, do mean to rush you, your turn. Why the voters in Tanjong Paga should vote your team into parliament? Hi, um, my name is Wendy, and again, I would like to emphasize that being a lawyer, the strong sense of justice drives me in this campaign. And we have looked at that sense of inequality and injustice for many different sectors across Tanjong Paga. Uh, starting from the rental homes, we have been, been invited to the environment and we see a lot of hardship and poverty there. Um, even amongst the three, four, five room HDB flats, the stories that have been shared on the ground reflected a sector of invisible poor in Singapore that we would like to make visible and give you the platform to deliver solutions that will work. 
We have also spoken to residents in the higher end HDB segment and again from ground stories, they, are, they want us to fight for them in terms of defects and structural damage that are appearing even in the newer town areas. Um, and across condominiums and landed classes, they see a huge problem in terms of transparency, independence and the lack of accountability in the current government. So across all levels, these are issues that require a fighter. And whilst I'm still an advocate in court, I think I can present that skill set, being a fighter for you on all these issues across all levels. And not just that, I think with my different teammates, um, Terence himself is a young father. He is also a pilot and he has started companies in the US. So he brings across multi-dimensional perspectives, both from the young family, the aviation, as well as the startup industry. Harish himself has been mentioned. He draws very strong references for driving uh, our digital nation and he is in the thick of things when we're talking about the fourth industrial revolution. Um, next up, we have Abbas, who's a professional trainer, and the whole emphasis about driving PMAPs to reskill and retrain themselves. He would be the best person to deliver this. And last but not least, we have um, Michael. He has been in the civil sector for a long time, but at the same time, he stepped up to drive many SMEs in strategic directions. And the SMEs themselves have personally suffered a lot in this COVID crisis. So he would understand what are the steps and reliefs that needs to be delivered to bring all these businesses out of the storm. So collectively, I would say that our team presents the best and most relevant professional background experience, both to deliver as fellow MPs and to run the town councils and at the same time to be your personal advocate as me uh, members of parliament, hopefully after this election. Thank you. Right, thank you very much there, Wendy. So folks, don't go away because coming up right away after this, talking to the panel, we'll be using Dr. Tan Cheng Bok for him to sum up why you must vote for change and you must have the courage to vote and let PSP become your voice in Parliament. Stay here, we'll be right back. Thank you. Hi. Everyone, I'm back finally with uh, Dr. Tan Cheng Bok, who is the Secretary General of PSP. And uh, I'd like to find out from him what are his final words that he'd like to share with the voters in Singapore for all the GRCs and SMCs that uh, PSP is participating in for this coming GE. Uh, we are coming to you on the eve of cooling day. Uh, because on that day, we are not supposed to do anything. Everyone is supposed to be quiet. So today is the only chance we have to give you the messages which are so important when you go to the polling booth on the 10th of July, which is this coming Friday. So without further ado, to wrap up for us for this evening, we have once again Dr. Tan Cheng Bok. The floor is yours, sir. Thank you, Greg. I have, I, I've watched and I've listened to the candidates. They were on the on the floor expressing their views on some of the issues and some of the experiences during this campaigning. So I wouldn't want to cover the subjects they have gone through. They have covered a wide range of subjects. But I would think it, at this juncture, I would like to talk something which, is, which I heard while campaigning with my men. And this, this I will call it the politics of fear. Now, it is, it is sad, but sometimes we do come across new citizens and even first-timers expressing that they fear that if they vote the opposition party, they will get into trouble. What kind of trouble? The new citizens fear that, that they will lose their citizenship. So we assure them, no, once you gain citizenship, nobody can just take your citizenship away. So there's no need to fear. Then the first-timers are worried that if they vote against the PAP, their career prospects will be affected. I think this is also an unfounded fear. So let me, you, maybe they should ask some of the, those people who have voted before against opposition parties. I'm sure they never experienced these, uh, these uh, actions taken against them. 
So I just want to take this opportunity to say, please don't worry. Just vote according to your conscience and also according to what you think, which particular, uh, which particular party will serve you best. All right. Now, there's another area which I want to cover, and that is this fear that should the opposition become the ruling party the next uh, after, uh, after this polling, the whole country is going to collapse. No, I think that is wrong. And if I recall, I remember Corbyn one once said, and I think, to, I think in one of the elections, that you'll be one day what will happen if you wake up the next after you wake up after polling day to realize that there's not the PAP in power. And that got everybody scared, you know. But this is not true. The institutions that actually run this company is not just the political party. We have our civil servants and many other, other, we've got a good judiciary, we've got a good army, good police and so on. They are part and parcel of the whole institutions of looking after Singapore. So there's no such thing as the whole country going to collapse. So please, please be assured that this will not happen. But just remember that at the end of the day, what people want is to build a good Singapore with a good political system, with good processes of transparency, accountability and independence. And of course, good people to run. And uh, this is what I call progressive politics. And you live, and after listening to my candidates talking, you will realize that these are the people that are needed to get this good process of govern, government going. You watch how they have performed in the campaigning and also the manner in which they articulate the policies. So we have, PSP has got this group of people that can achieve this good progressive politics. And this is the right tone that we must have to achieve a very good political system. And I, as I said, I'm sure you'll be very proud of them. If they go into parliament, if you elect them into parliament, they will prove to you they are men of substance, they are men of quality, they are men of integrity. So with that note, I want you to consider my PSP candidates very carefully, very, very carefully uh, uh, when, you, when you go to the polls to elect uh, your candidates. Please consider PSP candidates. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That was uh, Dr. Tan Cheng Bok wrapping up for Progress Singapore Party as to why you should vote for the candidates who are representing the party throughout the many GRCs and SMCs in Singapore. So uh, just to pick up uh, something that Dr. Tan mentioned about, what happens if you wake up on Saturday morning or late, uh, early Saturday morning and realize that there is zero, zero uh, alternative or opposition parties in parliament and the PAP has a clean sweep. That will be, I believe, a nightmare scenario for many Singaporeans going forward. They've been asking for a very strong mandate and if you have given it to them since 2015 until now, has our life become better? You decide for yourselves. So make the correct choice, be courageous, vote without fear because why are we doing this? Is because we want Singapore to become better for Singaporeans again. Put Singaporeans first. And on that note, I wish you all the best and I wish that you will vote for PSP in the coming GE 2020 on this coming Friday. My name is Craig, signing up from the PSP studio. Bye -bye. Thank you very much, Craig. Bye. Bye. PSP goes marching in when PSP goes marching in and Parliament will hear our thunder when PSP goes marching in when PSP goes marching
marching in When BSP goes marching in We will wait when BSP goes marching in When BSP goes marching in When BSP goes marching in We will make them all accountable When BSP goes marching in When BSP goes marching in When BSP goes marching in We want a better life for our people When BSP goes marching in When BSP goes marching in When PSP goes marching in We will work for country and people When PSP goes marching in When PSP goes marching in If you look at the money they spend, the hard worker, they you take that money, and if it's to a Singaporean, they'll do a much better job, which is what they used to do. We use the service of the service to treat everyone. The government, these services, these services, are not the government's money. If you say Chen Qing Wu Yi Sheng, it becomes your MP, right? 哎，你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你
three months without income and they're not getting anywhere. Uh, this is really, it was a very, very bad situation for them. We empathize them with them and uh, we hope uh, that uh, with the support we can get into parliament to be a stronger voice. Singapore, you are in Singapore, you are in Singapore.